Your right to self-identify. My right to disagree. Who is oppressing whom? Written by Kenny Bomer. Narrated by Frank Block. Introduction In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. Imagine what you might think if a 100-year-old man told you he is a 12-year-old boy and he expected you to believe it. Would you? How many people would it take telling you the man is a 12-year-old boy for you to believe it? One? One hundred? One thousand? One million? Would you concede to the claim of the old man and those who support him? Or would you look at the gray hair and other common features common to old age and insist there is no conceivable way the 100-year-old man could be the 12-year-old boy he was claiming to be? What would you say to a person who claimed to be an amputee even though you could clearly see that they were blessed with all four limbs. What if the person was so insistent about the claim of being an amputee that he or she sought medical treatment to have one or more perfectly good body parts surgically removed? Would you encourage that person to become an amputee and agree that their healthy and perfectly functioning body parts should be hacked off in order to accommodate their thoughts and feelings? What if that person was the member of a group who demanded that you agree with him or her? Would you? What if the government created a law that says disagreeing would be oppressing that person's civil rights and you could be punished with a large fine or imprisonment for doing so? Would you tell the person to go ahead and chop off their limbs in order to be politically correct? Or would you stand up against the lie and protest against such a law? What would you say to a 95-pound teenage girl who insists she is grotesquely overweight? Would you agree with her out of fear of hurting her feelings? Would you tell her the solution to her problem is liposuction? What would your response be if masses of people, including members of the medical community, insisted that the solution for the young lady is liposuction? Would you agree? I am an opinion writer. My opinions are regulated by my religious beliefs, my education, a layman's understanding about any given topic, and or basic common sense. Do my opinions matter? Do I have a right to voice my opinion about a topic if I am not an expert in the field? Most people are not experts in political sciences, but they still voice their opinions about politicians and the happenings that take place within the political process. They do so by casting their votes. That is my intention with this book. I am simply casting my vote and voicing my opinion about what I consider to be a profoundly significant issue in the world today. The war against truth and biology, and the push to promote the idea that a person can self-identify as either male or female based on how the person thinks or feels, and that I and others are expected to agree. Well, I do not agree, and I maintain my rights under the First and Fifteenth Amendments as a citizen of the United States to say so and to voice my opinion. This book is not hate speech, and I am not promoting the idea of denying anyone their civil rights. On the contrary, this book is free speech. Free speech is a mechanism by which we keep society functioning. We all live in this world and we all have a right to voice our opinions about what transpires in it. I am fighting for my own rights, and the rights of others to be free of government oppression and coercion in this era of cancel culture. I am boycotting the boycotts of any group or organization who seek to remove or cancel any person, organization, product, brand, or anything else for simply disagreeing with their claims. I do not deny anyone's right to make any claim they wish, but I maintain my right to disagree with any claim being propagated, especially when said claim defies reality and all sense of basic logic and reason. What others do or think about themselves is not important to me. However, I do have a problem when a group and their supporters promote what I know to be a lie and then place demands on others to accept or agree with it. That does not make me a bigot, and I am certainly not a person who lacks empathy. I am a realist, and I am speaking out via this book because I do not intend to ever play what I call gender charades with anyone, especially at the expense of truth. 
What truth? The truth of our Creator. Blessed and exalted is He. And the unaltering biological facts related to the creation of the male and female. O humankind, indeed, we have created you male and female, and have made you different nations and tribes, so that you may know one another. Indeed, the noblest of you in the sight of Allah is the best in conduct. Indeed, Allah is all-knowing and all-aware. Quran Surah Al-Hujurat 49, Ayah 13 Chapter Al-Hujurat 49, Verse 13 We are living in an age when the acceptance of falsehood and the rejection of truth has become an ever-growing part of social conformity. An age when the powers of persuasion are more prominent than ever before in the history of the human race. A time when lies and deception are readily accepted, and truth is questioned and compromised. Society says alcohol is okay, and people consume it despite the negative health effects, broken families, and high rates of death caused by drunk driving, etc. Society says it is okay for professional athletes to get paid enormous amounts of money per game to entertain us, while homeless people sleep in the elements on the streets outside of the stadiums and venues that athletes play in. Then we drive past those homeless people to watch our favorite athletes play meaningless games. Society says people have the right to self-identify as anything they wish, and demands are then placed on people to accept the claims even though the claims deny the unchangeable facts of biology. In today's society, people who speak out against falsehood and defense of truth often become a target. I do not fear such backlash. I am prepared to face it, because I will never accept the idea that a person has a right to decide they are something other than genetics prove them to be, and that I or others should have to agree with it. I do not fear being cancelled, shadow banned, fined, incarcerated, or even killed while defending the unquestionable truths of our Creator. Blessed and exalted is He. I only fear Allah. Blessed and exalted is He. And I believe we are tested by Him with everything we are given or denied. We do not choose on which day we will be born. We do not get to choose who our parents will be, our race, nationality, what our eventual height, eye, or hair color will be. We do not get to choose which day we will die, nor do we get to choose to be male or female. We are tested in this life by all of those things and more. Therefore, it is my obligation as a Muslim to combat falsehood with truth and to fight against injustice. I believe forcing people to accept a lie and punishing them for not doing so is far beyond unjust. I believe it is one of the vilest forms of evil imaginable. Hence, my reason for authoring this book. Cursed by Allah, Satan said, And surely I will lead them astray. And surely I will arouse desires in them. And surely I will command them. And they will cut the ears of cattle. And surely I will command them. And they will change Allah's creation. Whoever chooses Satan for a guardian instead of Allah is verily a loser and has suffered a tremendous loss. Satan only makes them false promises and eludes them with empty hopes. Truly, Satan promises them nothing but delusion. Quran, Surah and Nisa 4, Ayah 119 through 120. Chapter and Nisa 4, verses 119 through 120.